decks and heights is different colors, ethnicities, faces. Different spices, clothing, and you can experience the world in a matter of just a few blocks. Jackson Heights is the heart of New York City. Jackson Heights is really just four long blocks tall and 25 blocks wide. There are over 167 different languages spoken in Jackson Heights. We have an awfully large community of Latinos from Ecuador, from Colombia, from the Dominican Republic. We have a large South Asian community. We have all these uh, Indian, Nepali, Pakistani. You're visiting South Asia basically without a visa. <laughs> Jackson Heights has become famous in part for its food. My hardest part in Jackson is to see which restaurant I'm going to eat today. You can go and have an Indian entree and then go for Colombian coffee and croissants. Jackson Heights is well connected to all the mass transit systems. You can come by the E or the F train, you can come by the number seven train. Driving BQE, you can Brooklyn. 15 minutes, you know, Brooklyn. Even the two airports, I mean, LaGuardia is only like 15 minutes away and JFK, depending, half an hour or two days. <laughs> Best part of living here is the architecture is awesome. And the scale of the building, you know, it's feel like also friendly, you know. And here it can be an apartment or it can be a house. It's not sort of groundbreaking new architecture. It's vernacular architecture. What was built for sort of the middle to upper middle class in the 20s. But here it was done on a fairly wide comprehensive scale to create sort of a physical sense of community. Those buildings have become well known for the gardens that they have. So some gardens are freestyle and they have vegetables or they have flowers and plants. Others are more landscaped. And uh, whereas we don't have much public green space, we do have these private gardens. The neighborhood definitely has a challenge with not having enough park space. Of the community boards, I think we're ranked 50th in terms of public open space. It all became apartment buildings, save one block which became Travers Park. Now across the street from it is the garden school and their yard was ultimately purchased by the city a couple of years ago with the intention of connecting it with Travers Park. And there's supposed to be a large lawn which would be sort of the first public lawn, you know, here in the neighborhood in decades. Jackson Heights had been a planned community when it was built between about 1915 and 1940. The South Asian shops actually probably appeared before the population did. This neighborhood changed. These American stores became Indian stores. Jackson Diner used to be an American restaurant. They used to serve burgers and hot dogs and eventually, you know, we don't serve American food anymore, we just serve authentic Indian food. That's the way it is, it's changed. You know, people focus on sort of an ethnic or demographic diversity, but it's also sort of an economic diversity. There are access points where people of regular means can find a home here. This area, there's a big demand so the rents are going up, and they have been going up, and I think they'll continue to go up. And it's difficult for a lot of people that are middle class to afford these rents. Other people that come to Jackson Heights are looking for the same thing that I was looking for, a place where you have a reasonable cost of living, but you also have the element of acceptance and tolerance in this community. And that's what draws people to want to come to this neighborhood. You know, they say New York City is the melting pot, but within the melting pot, it's Jackson Heights. This is the real melting pot of New York. It's the crossroads of the world. Mm -hmm.